There has been a market rise in far-right violent extremism in America, the January 6th insurrection being just the largest example. Project 2025, the far-right blueprint for a second Trump presidency, would not only protect, but in some cases, amplify this kind of extremism. Now, I talk about Project 2025 on every single show. Some of its extremist proposals are stated quite directly and explicitly. Some are cloaked. But all of the threats in this document are real, and they are, in fact, all tied to Donald Trump, despite his tireless and dishonest efforts to distance himself from them and from Project 2025 as a whole. So today, we're going to look at Chapter 17, entitled The Department of Justice. Project 2025 would take an ax to federal investigations of conservative hate groups and far-right extremism, dismissing these threats as, quote, manufactured extremism. Experts warn that dismantling government scrutiny of what is currently the nation's top national security threat would allow these groups to thrive and to expand. The Oath Keepers and Proud Boys, who played a key role in the January 6th insurrection, underscore the rising threat of far-right violence to our democratic institutions. When many of those insurrectionists were prosecuted, it, it exposed the troubling infiltra uh, infiltration of right-wing extremism into the U.S. military. NPR found that nearly one in five individuals charged for their involvement in the Capitol attack had served or were currently serving in the military. In response, the Department of Defense, under the Biden administration, undertook a series of measures following January 6th to address extremist infiltration into the military. Project 2025 targets those efforts directly. On page 52, the blueprint calls for the National Security Council to righteously review the military's responsibility and move away from prioritizing what it calls non-defense and social matters, um, uh, social engineering like, quote, manufactured extremism that it says weaken our armed forces. On page 160, by the way, which is not part of the chapter on uh, national security, uh, on the Department of Justice, it directs the Department of Homeland Security to reassess its, quote, domestic terrorism lines of effort to align with a future Republican president, presumably Donald Trump's priorities. The blueprint on page 549 calls for, quote, an immediate comprehensive review of all major active FBI investigations and activities and proposes that the FBI redirect its focus to other threats. OK, so what are the other threats? Rather than domestic, violent, white nationalist extremism, the threats it would like the FBI to focus on are affirmative action, and diversity, equity, and inclusion initi initiatives. The FBI. The plan specifically calls for the Department of Justice to be reorganized to target entities that practice affirmative action, or DEI. In other words, today's Republican Party sees diversity as the top national security threat and plans to treat it as such. You cannot make this stuff up. The DOJ policing DEI. Last year, the Southern Poverty Law Center added 12 conservative so-called parents' rights group to its list of extremist organizations, warning that certain hate groups have shifted their tactics since the insurrection, operating under the banner of parental rights in order to push an anti-government white nationalist agenda. And one of those groups is, you guessed it, Moms for Liberty. Project 2025 slams the FBI's scrutiny of those groups, accusing the Department of Justice on page 545 of this document of chilling the free speech rights of parents. Never mind that those parents are actually attacking the First Amendment right that states explicitly that, quote, the government shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech, end quote. On page 540. Eight of this document, Project 2025, accuses the FBI of harassing protesting parents whom it claims are unfairly being labeled as domestic terrorists, which they are not. Experts warn that Project 2025 would remove crucial safeguards protecting our institutions and the public from the growing threat of far-right hate groups, allowing them to expand. Joe Moore, a former FBI informant who tracked police ties to the KKK, warns that domestic extremist groups are being mobilized at, as, quote, frontline shock troops, end quote, in the event of a contested election. 
He found that some Florida police officers were active Klan members recruiting other Klan members into law enforcement. A Reuters investigation indicates that a significant number of U.S. police instructors have ties to a constellation of armed right-wing militias, militias are illegal in this country, by the way, and white supremacist hate groups, a report that adds to a fast-growing body of evidence showing a deadly threat inside U.S. police departments. Project 2025's agenda could allow these ties to grow, since on page five, uh, 557, it calls for eliminating all consent decrees issued by the Department of Justice. When the Justice Department finds evidence of misconduct within a state or local government agency like a police department, it issues one of these decrees, a consent decree, which creates and enforces a roadmap for change. Consent decrees are used to curb civil rights abuses against people of color, the mentally ill, the disabled, things like that. Moore, who previously served abroad in authoritarian countries, tells The Guardian, quote, nothing I witnessed in any of them scares me as much as what we're facing at home right now. Should we be afraid? With the 2024 election looming and democracy itself on the ballot, the answer is yes, we should be very afraid. After a quick break, we'll discuss, the, uh, discuss this further with Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney. Joining me now is Barbara McQuaid, former United States attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. She's the co-host of Sisters in Law, uh, the author of the book, Attack from Within, How Disinformation is Sabotaging America. Barbara, you are the perfect person to talk to about this because as uh, a, a U.S. attorney, you actually dealt with far-right extremism and militias. In fact, in your, your home state of Michigan, it, it, there are many of them that are quite active. They were involved in a plot to kidnap uh, your governor. I just want to be clear, under the law... An armed militia that is doing things that are that, that feel like enforcement of the law or upholding of the law is not legal in America. You can't you can't actually do that. They're gun clubs, basically. Exactly right, Ali. Um, most states forbid drilling with firearms, uh, parading, and wearing the insignia that suggests that you're a law enforcement officer for obvious reasons. It can cause confusion and it can create danger. What's difficult, however, about enforcing it is, as you said. Our First Amendment right to free association means that if you are a member of a gun club, you are entitled to go get together and practice shooting. And so as a result, the enforcement of those laws has been really quite lax. Let's talk more broadly about th this area about the Department of Justice as it relates to uh, far right extremism. As far as Project 2025 goes, it's it's a little more nuanced and a little more coded than some of the other areas like abortion, where it, it speaks openly about it. There's a sense in here that the government has gone awry in concentrating on far-right violent extremism in America and should be refocused on other things. And it does talk about DEI and affirmative action. Sounds nonsensical to me that they would like the FBI involved in stuff like that. But it also seems to ignore what is emerging and has emerged as the major national security threat in this country. Experts like yourself and others say domestic violent extremism is, in fact, our major national security threat. Yeah, the U uh, U.S. Department of Homeland Security has identified uh, domestic uh, extremism as the top threat to our national security. And, you know, it, it, you, you get a sense of where this document is coming from, even in this chapter, where it uses phrases like the need to restore the FBI's integrity after the Russia hoax. It says the FBI is completely out of control. Uh, you know, I think the only thing that has disparaged the FBI's reputation is lies by Donald Trump. In fact, if anything, I found this FBI to be a bit on the timid side in terms of its preparation for January 6th, its willingness to search Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence. And so I don't think the FBI needs to be reined in when it is going after violent extremism. And one thing that's really important to note, uh, Ellie, that I think this document perhaps probably purposely uh, ignores is the FBI is not in the business of enforcing speech. It is in the business of enforcing conduct. And so when conduct uh, is violent, that's when the FBI gets involved. It's not enough that you said something uh, unpleasant to your school board member. It's when you are threatening to kill them 
that the yes. FBI might get involved. <laughs> Let's talk broadly about what the dangers are of under, un, uh, underestimating or de-emphasizing the efforts to deal with real national security issues. Because we've seen this in this country before, right? We Just by the nature of what we do, we sometimes tend to be concentrated and put our resources in the, in the last big threat we thought about. And some would argue that that, you know, didn't prepare us as well as we prep should have been for 9-11. What's the danger here of disregarding, actively and willfully disregarding, the thing that is our biggest national security? security threat. How does this actually play out for us in 10 or 15 years? Well, I think what we would see is political violence. And so the things that we have seen, for example, you mentioned the plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer in my state of Michigan, or vigilante violence like the man who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband in their home. Uh, the man who, in response to the Mar-a-Lago search, went to his local FBI office in Cincinnati with an assault weapon and tried to breach that office and was later killed in a standoff with police. Uh, I think if we ignore those kinds of threats, we are doomed to have more of them. You know, one of the main reasons we enforce the law is not only to remove dangerous perpetrators from our streets, but to send a deterrent message that this conduct is against the law and is against our national security. And so if the FBI shrugs its shoulders at these things or enables these things, I think we're going to see more of it. And it is a danger uh, to public safety and democracy. Project 2025 criticizes uh, the military's focus on what it calls non-defense matters. Now, what they're talking about is things that the military does to make things more fair and equitable. Military leaders have objected to this. They've said it's hard to get people into the military. It's, it's actually really, really tough. And to keep an active military, you have to be like a workplace. You have to have, have rules. You have to have things. And military leaders have said these things do not undercut their ability to do what they do in their core mission, and that is to defend America. Yeah, not only does it not harm their ability, it actually assists their ability. I recall when there was a major case on affirmative action for the University of Michigan some years ago, one of the most persuasive amicus briefs that was filed came from the U.S. military that said that diversity, equity, and inclusion was actually helping the readiness of its troops. It was building camaraderie, teamwork, recruiting, uh, and helpful in their mission. And so, uh, you know, this, this nonsense that Somehow, DEI means that we are no longer the, uh, the, the top military we need to be is, is, is wrong and it's dangerous. Barbara, great to talk to you about this. Thank you very much for joining us. Barbara McQuaid is a former United States attorney, co-host of the Sisters-in-Law podcast and an MSNBC legal analyst.